there's something about the 9-11 that you just can't find anywhere else. There's a there's a durability to it. You can really use them in any situation. They last forever if you maintain it. They're fairly low maintenance. They're actually really, really efficient. They get great fuel economy. Like I drive these things like all over the place. And I mean, the RS back there, like we just came back from an 8,000 kilometer road trip. What other supercar can you drive that, that's gonna give you this type of experience where it's reliable, it's efficient, it's in the grand scheme of things, fairly cost-effective to, to own. Depreciation is not so much of a factor. I mean, lately things have been, the market's just been crazy. Things are a little bit overvalued in some ways, but even in a normal market, 911s historically hold their value really, really well. And so I've always been drawn to the 911 and there's something about the driving experience, having the engine behind you, the sound behind you, the very light front end, the the view of the, the road right in front of you straight down the front hood because you don't have an engine bringing up the front end of the car. It's it's a really cool experience and it's, it's usable every single day. It's comfortable. The 964 has always been my favorite body style. It's my favorite generation 911. I think it really balances vintage driving experience and style with a, a modern usability that you don't have in the earlier cars. You've got working air conditioning. You've got smoother body lines that definitely bring it into the into definitely the 90s. I'm not going to say it looks any more modern than that. It really does still have that original uh, uh, air-cooled Porsche look. But the 964 has always spoken to me as being kind of the perfect air-cooled 911. But I was always captivated by RWB and this crazy, insane wide body kit. I was always really impressed by the, the road presence that these cars have. I was just always kind of intrigued by this character who's building these cars. He's like no other Porsche builder on the planet. Like he really has his own thing going. He, he clearly doesn't care what people think because so many people really hate these cars. And I always kind of admired that. And so there's another part of me that has always really liked having a car that no one else has. And I feel like too many collectors can just walk into their local Porsche dealer and buy a brand new 911 or buy a bone stock 911. And it doesn't really speak to the enthusiasm of the brand every time. I think there are a lot of enthusiasts that drive bone stock 911s, myself included, but I think the way you identify a real diehard car guy is the uniqueness that their particular car has. And in my eyes, there's nothing as unique as something like this. I mean, you don't run into another one on the road. It's always the only one at a car meet. And there's always something to talk about with the car. Like it's such a cool story that you can strike, strike up a conversation with pretty much anyone and I've always really enjoyed that. I think it's much more about the people than it is about the cars. There's always been an element of excitement in, in just the ownership of a car like that, having something completely unique that, that no one else really has. And RWB has always fascinated me. Like I remember when I was, you know, 12 years old and this was just starting to kind of hit the internet. And it was, it was, it was very cool to see something very different and it was also very cool in a weird way to see the backlash towards these cars. Like people really were quick to hate on these things because, oh, you're destroying a, a really cool vintage 911 that should be left alone. And part of me as a Porsche purist would have agreed and still does agree to an extent that, that Porsche did things right from the beginning and you don't want to mess with that too much. But then on the other hand, you have to give credit to builders like this who can express themselves in such a cool way and almost disregard all of the background noise of what everyone else is saying. I mean, you can't compare to what was possible in the 90s to what's possible today. And so I think it's appropriate to kind of resto mod these cars a little bit and bring them into the 21st century with a little bit of different styling cues. And I think Nakai is always going to be a celebrated character in this time period. I think it's going to be a, a clear representation of this era of Porsche enthusiasm. He's not going to do it forever. This car, it's never gonna appeal to everyone. There's always gonna be a lot of haters that, that don't like it. And I completely understand why, because I can see how you could be kind of upset by the process in which these cars get built. But if you can appreciate it from a different standpoint as a car guy as a whole, and take it for what it is as bringing 90s Porsche into the modern world, 
I think it's a really, really cool car. Like, and it's it's a really cool story, and it's a really cool glimpse into pop culture in today's day and age of of what's hot and exciting for for the modern car guy. And so that's always kind of what's made the RWB appeal to me, aside from just the general, you know, the coolness of an air cooled 911 already. As crazy and obnoxious as this car looks, it's really very approachable to drive in the grand scheme of things. It has brand new, very sticky tires on it, so you're not so worried about the back end stepping out on you. It doesn't have that much power. It's a, it's a largely stock engine. And so I'm not too shy about letting friends drive it. I mean, half of this video shoot, I had one of my friends driving because I was busy with work. I mean, it's really just awesome being able to share this experience with, with a lot of other people. And, and this is the car that I find the most joy in sharing the experience. It's just, it, it, really, it really draws the right kind of attention and, uh, and it, it feels good at the end of the day to give people the opportunity to, to try a car that, or see a car that they, that they haven't seen and likely won't otherwise see and uh, I get a lot of satisfaction out of that. When I started learning more and more about Nakai, finally I, I found myself in the position where it actually became realistic to, to have one of these things. And so I started the process of, of seeking out what would be involved in acquiring an RWB. It's a lot more involved of a process than I ever really anticipated. I mean, normally in years past, Nakai would fly out to you and he would build the car at your shop or in your garage or wherever you would have all the parts ready for him and he'd construct it right there in front of your eyes. But ever since COVID, Nakai has actually stopped traveling. So he hasn't gone and, and done any builds in North America, which unfortunately uh, being in North America and in Canada of all places, that put a bit of a, a damper on things up front. I thought, oh, I don't think I'm really gonna be able to, to get one of these. There's a huge wait list and it's, it's very challenging to, to get a spot. But fortunately through buying so many cars all over the world, you, you make a lot of friends. And I got really lucky that one of the brokers that helps us with a lot of our, our Japanese imports had a connection to Nakai and was able to help facilitate a build in Japan. Instead of having Nakai fly out, instead we sent a car to him. The first step of the process was of course, we had to find a donor car. So we started looking at all the auctions and different, different avenues to try to find a donor car. Um, and it was very important that it was a 964, because it's my, it's my favorite air-cooled 911 generation. It was very important that it was a coupe. It was very important that it was a manual transmission. It was very important that it was rear wheel drive. Um, and it was very important that it hadn't been in any accidents or anything. Aside from that, I was pretty flexible. Like it didn't really matter what color it was. The mileage didn't matter. The, the condition of the engine, the condition of the interior, the body, none of it really mattered as long as it was a good straight car. And so we started looking for one and eventually we found one at an auction house in Japan. It was a 1993 Carrera 2. It's a Japanese spec car that was sold new in Japan. It's never left Japan. You can tell it's a Japanese spec car because of little features here and there. Like it's got the uh, rest of world spec turn signals on the front fenders. It's got a little bit wider rear license plate mount uh, compared to a North American car. So there are a couple little things that set it apart from the North American equivalent. And we sent the guys to go inspect it and it, it checked out. It was a good running driving car, but it had been kind of hacked up a little bit. It had kind of an aftermarket body kit on it already, which in my case was okay because it, it made me feel a little less guilty about cutting up a very nice original car. This one had already been kind of messed with. And so we, we checked it out. Um, it was good, and so I gave them the green light. I said, okay, let's buy the car. The, the auction rolled around, it's the middle of the night, and we're bidding, 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 and we keep getting outbid. And the bids just went crazy, like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, which it was like completely not worth it for a ratty like 964 track car. Very quickly, I kind of lost steam in, in that donor car, and I thought, okay, well, we got outbid on that one, it's never gonna happen, we'll have to find something else. A couple weeks later, um, the same broker that's been helping stick handle the whole process uh, messaged me and he said, hey, this same car has popped up at a different auction house in Japan. Do you still want to bid on it? And I thought, okay, let's, let's bid on it. 
And so this time we got lucky and we actually got it. Uh, it. It was way more expensive than we hoped for it to be for kind of a, a ratty car. But at the end of the day, it was a car that was in Japan. It was accessible. It was a manual rear wheel drive coupe 964. And so we, we pulled the trigger. And then the next step was was really paying for the car and sending it over to Nakai's shop. So we had it transported to uh, RWB headquarters where Nakai started disassembly of the car. With COVID, there have been so many supply shortages. So it was a bit challenging getting parts. That was the biggest challenge of this build. But once everything started trickling in, we, we got custom work S1 wheels that were, that were built to RWB spec. They're even etched with a little RWB stamping in them. So they look really, really cool. They're built to order for this car. We got the body panels and everything. The interior, uh, everything had, had eventually accumulated to the point that Nakai could start disassembling the car. So that's exactly what he did. He pulled off all the aftermarket body panels, um, he pulled the wheels off, he pulled the suspension off, he started test fitting things. I got really, really lucky since I couldn't be there in person to see Nakai work his magic. Larry Chen, who's like a really famous uh, motorsport photographer, he happened to be shooting a documentary for Haggerty about RWB right at the time that my car was being disassembled. And so I got really lucky. He took a bunch of amazing photos of the car being disassembled by Nakai. And so once it was all disassembled, um, he, he wheeled it into his workshop and he, he test fitted all the, the body panels, the side skirts, everything, which is crazy to watch because he really just eyeballs everything. And uh, once everything was properly fitted, it went into the paint booth where he actually painted it himself, which is, is even crazier to think that he's as talented as he is as a body guy, but he can still use the, the paint cannon and, and do a really good job painting a car. I, I chose Maritime Blue, which is my favorite 911 color of all time. Uh, it came out on the 964 Carrera RS back in the early 90s, so it's the right time period for this car, and it is a genuine Porsche color, which was very important to me. I, As crazy as it sounds, I wanted to be a bit of a purist and and kind of honor the originality in the design of the 964. And so I thought Maritime Blue would be fitting. Um, I, I brought it into the interior with the pole position seats, kind of in OEM Carrera RS spirit. And so we painted it Maritime Blue and then Nakai wheeled it out of the shop and he he went to town on it. He installed all the, the body panels. Um, we chose to do kind of more of a low key kind of build. We don't have the crazy triple stacker wing. We don't have the crazy double stacker side skirts. Um, I didn't go too crazy with the stickers or anything, but I wanted to keep kind of a, a subtle, as subtle as an RWB can be, look to this car. And I think I think it turned out pretty much exactly as I wanted it to. Actually, it turned out, it turned out better than I expected it was going to. I'm, I'm really, really happy with the way it came together. Eventually, the car was done. I couldn't believe how quickly it all came together. I mean, from the time all the parts arrived, it was only a matter of a couple of weeks. And then, you know, Nakai took it for his, his little maiden voyage. He, he took some photos and then we loaded it on a truck. We sent it to the port in Japan. We put it on a boat. Then the boat dropped it in Vancouver, which is on the other side of Canada. Then a friend of mine transported it all the way from Vancouver to here. And I finally got to see it for the first time. And, and when this thing rolled off the truck, it was like, it was like Christmas morning. I've never seen anything like it. It was, it was just crazy. And I still feel the same way every time I walk into the garage and see it. It's, uh, it's, it's a really eye-catching car. And I'm really proud that that it came together the way it did. And I feel like uh, I feel like the 15 year old me just sitting there watching YouTube videos of Nakai building 964s would be pretty would be pretty blown away if uh, if he knew that that this was the future. And so I'm uh, I'm pretty excited about this one. Ooh. Mm -hmm.